I never wanted to be an economist. I saw myself as a translator, that I could fight my way through understanding the more complicated stuff and then help everyday people understand what's going on. And my motivation actually was I, I didn't feel like it's possible to be a citizen in a complicated world economic environment and not know something about how the economy worked. My parents were immigrants and they sacrificed for me, sent me to the best schools, and I ended up in graduate school at Princeton at the Woodrow Wilson School. That gave me a certain number of tools. If I had any kind of uh, talent, it would be in taking something complicated and breaking it down and explaining it to people like my parents. It's remarkable how confused people are about what's going on. The dominant explanation right now is something like this. People who shouldn't have gotten mortgages found a way to get mortgages. It was their fault for getting in over their heads. It was their banker's fault for giving them mortgages that they should have never given them. And we were all playing fast and loose, and that's now wrecked the economy. How did 300 billion turn into three or four trillion of toxic assets? The multiplication of the problem happens through what I call fantasy finance. How banks could sell something again and again without actually owning the security is the core of the story. The wealth of the top 1% grew by $1.45 trillion, while the wealth of the bottom 20% declined by $250 billion. And Wall Street's very smart. And they developed financial instruments that paid a little bit more than traditional financial instruments. And the investment community rushed for these things. Two things have to happen to stop fantasy finance from re-emerging and to rectify the fundamentals of the economic situation. Money has to move from the top of the income scale down to the middle and bottom. The other part is we have to move money from the financial sector to the real economy. Nobody getting money from the federal government should earn more than the President of the United States. If you have a free market financial sector, it is prone to collapse. And when it does collapse, the rest of us pay for it. We should be insured for the likelihood of its next collapse and for the damage done during this collapse. Put a very, very small tax, three one hundredths of one percent, on each and every financial transaction. This small tax would probably generate up to a trillion and a half dollars globally a year. Our take, our share would be like 500 billion a year. Society is a lot fairer when people have the ability to be in unions. Getting people into unions would help push wages back up to close that gap between what we should be getting and what we are getting. If we want free market capitalism in goods and services, we may have to socialize the biggest banks and run them for the public good. The idea of renewable energy and a sustainable economy is on the table now. And what we need to have done needs to be done here. You can't send your house to be weatherized to China. And that will allow the creation of a new era of jobs that have to be local. I think we have to go forward with some bold ideas and some initiative. And, and mobilization is also needed to put pressure on even a good Obama administration to make sure that the policies that uh, uh, will actually help us get out of this mess, get instituted.